Good morning everyone, this is Mehra Jaluli and I'm going to present our work titled Predicting Blood Glucose Levels Using CNN-LSTM Neural Networks. Our motivation for this project is accurate forecasting of blood glucose levels which is a crucial and of course a challenging problem for diabetes management. So given this motivation, our objective as shown in figure 1 is designing a system which uses deep learning techniques specifically a CNN-LSTM model to predict a future CGM given a multivariate physiological dataset and some other information from the patient. So the data that we used was collected during the research project DI Advisor from 59 patients with different histories of type 1 diabetes disease participating in a 3-day in-hospital study. Here in figure 2, x-axis shows the time interval for day 1, day 2, and day 3 and y-axis shows CGM and MIL formation in top panel and basal and bolus insulin as well as the correction doses information in bottom panel. So this is our proposed CNN LSC model. Firstly, the data is divided into train and test sets in patient-wise manner. Then the training set is divided into segments with equal length and is fed to the model. And here in this section, the CNN section automatically extracts the significant features from the data set and in the next section, which is the LSTM part of the model, the sequence learning, which uh, means learning the patterns and the relations between the variables is performed and then finally at the output layer, we get the predicted values for CGM, which has the length equal to the prediction horizon. So we trained separate models for 30, 60, and 90 minutes prediction horizon and we got very good results. The bar plot in figure 4 shows the performance evaluation using mean absolute error or MAE, root mean square error or RMSE, accuracy or ACC, and coefficients of determination or R2 for different prediction horizons. And here the box plot in figure 5 shows the patient-wise performance evaluation using the same metrics across the test population. Ages of box plots are the 25th and 75th percentile and median is shown at the middle of the box. According to figure 4 in previous slide and figure 5 in this slide, we see that by increasing the prediction horizon, the variance of the results and error increases. And finally, here in figure 6, we can see two examples of the predicted CGM for different prediction horizons. Here, y-axis shows the glycemia and x-axis shows the time. This highlighted part that shows time before zero is the total historical data that the model uses for prediction. After time zero, we see the predicted values and the ground truth. For each prediction horizon, the model uses the previous samples with length equal to 3 times the length of the prediction horizon. For example, for 30 minute prediction horizon, the model takes 90 minutes of the data, previous 90 minutes of the data, and then forecasts the future 30 minutes. Or for a 60 minute prediction horizon, it takes previous 180 minutes, or for 90 minute prediction horizon, it takes the previous 270 minutes of the data. So, as it was presented, our model could reliably predict retrospective clinical CGM in both short and long term with superior performance. Our future work will consider implementation of our prediction into a smartphone-based decision support system for type 1 diabetes management. Thank you for your attention.